I'm back guys we are about to get to the loser semis and i'm here with lothar how are you feeling lothar about Good. it's a long day Devil. yeah this really is like day. actually day three of the tournament yeah and we have three more matches so uh a lot of stuff actually will be happening still right this this is the losers semi-final mm -hmm. right that we'll have then after that we'll have the loser final and then the final uh, between the winner of the winner's bracket and winner of the loser's bracket. As yep. weird as it sounds, that's, h that's how double elimination works. So we're seeing Chonger again, and we were just watching him win the last game. Mm -hmm. So he's on a streak. Yep. Okay, and he will be playing against Sian Half. And uh, this is the bracket, as you can see. This is the loser's bracket, so Winning Moon... We'll be fighting whoever wins this. Yes, exactly. So Chonger or Sian Half will advance to the final of the loser's bracket against Waning Moon, who's already waiting there and now scouting the decks from his opponents. <laughs> right. So he'll Shiny be watching P this is match. also waiting, right? Waiting for the yeah, winner of the losers. Yeah, Shiny yes. Pants is waiting for the winner of the final of the loser's bracket. So I bet, uh, I bet both are watching right now. <laughs> and just taking notice, uh, notes about what are the players exactly playing and how are they playing because the, the game style of the players here is quite different from what I'm an example uh, for, for, for from what I see in example in Europe and America so it's quite interesting to see the different type of, uh, of um, play styles in Southeast Asia, Asia here so we can see that CN have uh, banned the freeze mage and that was the Malagus freeze mage we saw earlier Chonger decides to ban the druid. Interesting, because if you ban the druid and you plan to play the mage... But he d Chonger oh, he has, has a re Reno, Reno lock. Reno lock, okay. It was like hmm. an OTK Reno lock. Because I saw a manipulator, faithless manipulator in there. So we'll not actually see a druid in this match, because Chonger is not sporting a druid at all, and the Sen Half's druid is getting banned. Yeah, oh, no druids in this match. Interesting. So now we'll see the Warlock versus Warlock matchup. Ah, uh, Zoo versus uh, Reno. Most likely. Probably not a. It's the Warlock face off. Yeah. San Sian Half is starting with triple two drops, which is not maybe the best when you're c uh, when you're starting, because it leaves him at a really awkward to curve. Uh, he's not able to fill unless he will drop. Uh, he'll draw a one drop. So the dark peddler will come in handy here. ACD Swampus. Sorry. I think so. He's playing the ACD Swampus on turn one. Oh. Tries to be super aggressive. I was th I was thinking he was gonna coin the peddler there. Well, it's better to play the free attack minion just because it denies your opponent from playing the um, void walker. Makes it very awkward. You can't really play into Atheist Swampus. Yeah. By the way, he has Dark he has an Atheist Swampus himself, which is interesting. So this is Zoo prepared for uh, weapon matchups. Oh yeah, that's interesting. A Swampus in a Zoo. The Pendle helps out to curve out on turn three, which is very important. Reno Jackson already in hand. People kind of underestimate um, the fact of how important it is to have it already in hand. Some people even just keep it in their open hand mm -hmm. just to have that certainty that you can adjust your game plan and, and game style um, just backed up by the reason that you have the green rejection right in, ha in hand because you can be more aggressive, you can use um, your health as a resource more because of that. So I it helps you to push more aggressively. So I really like that. Um, I really like to have the Reno Jackson already in hand. Yeah, it's very it's very nice to have the Reno Jackson against an aggro. Doesn't look bad for um, Chonger actually with this with this hand, although he will kind of lose board control right uh, after the Defender Vargas will be dropped now. Still doesn't look bad. He has a zombie chow and a PR hellfire will come in handy as well. So you can pop both eggs. I mean sorry, an egg and a hunted creeper and follow it up with a hellfire if you would like to. Mm -hmm. 
But he wouldn't kill the Nerubian. Yeah, it would be yeah. a free one. Which is not terrible, but he has no follow-up. No Mortal Coil, no Peddler. And he already actually used one Peddler, so... That's kind of off the table. Yeah, I think he's preparing for the Hellfire for the upcoming turn. Now let's see if the Implosion will be used, because if there will be an Implosion, the Hellfire has to be played next turn. But at the same time, the Dial of Alpha mm -hmm. might help more here. So let's say you use the Dial of Alpha, you boost 2 minions to 6 attack, you're still kinda one short to... Okay, this changes a lot. This overextends the the board by a lot, but at the same time you get the benefit from the nap juggler, but the health fight will be painful. Oh, yeah, that's true. Free attack from the defender of Argus then can break the egg. Does he want to do that? Probably not. Well, he still has Void Walker. So he's not breaking the egg, that, but the problem is the egg already has a taunt. So it's not necessarily safe from, you know, any kind of action. That is a nice clear from Chonger. Yep. That was a really nicely done by Chonger. He's sitting on a healthy 20, so the Reno Jackson is not even needed right now. Yeah, and he's got a few cards in his hand. He's feeling okay. So the options are Light Warden, L Reliquary Seeker, and I can't remember the third one, but... Dark Pedal was used, and it's kind of interesting because it has interaction with Reno Jackson, with Siphon Soul, with um, Farseer, and it actually boosts the damage from it, so it's very interesting. This is, uh, he's gonna have to tap here. I mean, he doesn't want to use Reno Jackson just yet, and he doesn't want to use the Faceless Manipulator or Leroy. Yeah, that's kind of awkward. He has two yeah. POs, which is not uh, you know, needed right now, but at the same time, uh, more if you get the Emperor, then you can squeeze both Leroy Jackson and Faceless with both POs, and that's 1428 damage. But he doesn't have the Emperor yet, so this looks like a just a pass turn. Yeah. You don't. You are not accomplishing anything by Facelessing any of those creatures. So definitely pass in this turn. Yeah, he can um, afford to take four damage. He has a Shadow Flame, which is very important. Another tab, and Abusive Surgeon is being drawn, so plus 4 damage this turn if... Iron Dwarf plus Abusive Power Overwhelming. Uh, the PO is not yet needed, I like to keep it in my hand to have that burst like but hidden uh, mm -hmm. from my opponent, just to finish finish him off the same turn, which is winning the game. This I'm is not surprised damage. at the fact that he's putting Chonger on 10, although there might be a single a uh, single Molten Giant, but it's not really that important. Tap and Reno Jackson <laughs> for the perfect turn. It's so expected when, you know, your opponent has 8 mana, they tap, and then you know that the Reno Jackson is coming down yep. with the 6 remainder. Light Warden had the interaction, I was saying, so now it's boosted to 3-2. What's gonna happen now? Well... You kinda push to trade with that Reno Jackson because you can allow your opponent to have the Shadow Flame option with a minion on board. So I like that uh, play from Cyan. Still 10 damage. He could actually point. just MC Tech and then Shadow Flame. But oh no, well if that's not enough. If he MC Techs the 4-4, four four, then definitely. Yeah, that's true. Um. <laughs> Which is interesting if you play him bot. Oh yeah, this, yeah, this is better. I want to say that if you uh, heal both yourself, then again the Light Warden gets the buff, so it's 5-2 then. So you can't really play the healbot. But the Beacon Hunter has almost no targets against this type of zoo, so it's a good tool for the Shadow Flame. He still had the PO, so he could have just, even without the Beacon Hunter, he could have played any other creature, buff it with the PO. And that's basically it. Wait, how much damage is that? That's 14 damage, so 2 off. A single abuse of surgery would have been enough. But no worries to be made um, by Chonger. There's no way he will be killed from 26 with only 3 cards from Science, Especially when he has like access on the Doom Guards and maybe 2 POs. So that's like 13. And there's only 2 on board. So that's 15 damage. Definitely not enough. And basically that's yep. the game. 
That is it. Chonger's got lethal now, and there is no no taunts on CN half side. No chance of even getting a um, eight taunt. Double PO on the Leroy. That's something I'm I was used to, like almost two years or over two years ago, when Hearthstone was in early development and. Uh, Every handlock was playing a Leroy Jenkins with POs and a faces manipulator, and that was the combo because Leroy Jenkins was cheaper at that time. Mm. Oh, he was uh, four, four mana. mana. Four mana, so <laughs> you could have just easily combo with one PO uh, on turn ten and just deal twenty damage. That's out crazy. Of nowhere. I wasn't there that time. I wasn't playing Hearthstone yet. <laughs> uh, you know, it was a state of really. I would say maybe not obnoxious, but um, kind of like an aggressive meta game for Hearthstone. Every single deck had some kind of really OP stuff, like uh, the old Anish the Hounds, like even the first one that wasn't creating minions. It was just buffing uh, the attack from beasts, giving it permanent uh, buff, and giving them charge. Yeah, I heard about that too with the that Unleash the Hounds. That was like the the counter to Freeze Mage at some point of the game. But then it got changed to the two mana unleash the hounds, and then was broken with uh, with the um, with the buzzard, and he was drawing like twelve cards for two mana. This <laughs> is funny, actually. So we saw the warlock against warlock, both different decks. One was zoo, one was Rena lock. Now we have two paladins, and one is secret, and one is the murloc pally. <laughs> they really are the best of both worlds. True. Well, let's see how would the Secret Paladin will keep up with the Murloc, or the other way around, her Murloc Paladin will keep up with the Secret Paladin. But the Zombie Chow is really nice against the Secret Paladin. Definitely it is. It's not even better just hero power here. Right. It's important to kill the Noble Sacrifice as soon as it's, as it's played, because it avoids an Avenge. Uh, proc when there's a noble sacrifice on board and actually has a the nice interaction with the knife jugglers. That's really nice. This is really the problem nice, yeah. is the hard to cripple will now probably punish uh, Chonger for the hero power. Oh, not really. Okay. Good stuff. Sometimes it doesn't work. So, uh, let's say Truce of a Champion, right? You don't want to waste an a consecration on the board like that. So really lo like this because you also transfer four attack to the next turn. So it's a tempo play. When consecration was a is a tempo play as well because you clear up the board and you still have one minion on board. But the outcome from the source of a champion is w way more important for, uh, against a four drop that Cyan will play most likely. Mm -hmm. Even a two drop like another knife juggle, sure. I'll just kill that with the source of a champion. Why not? For justice. Solemn Vigil will most likely will play this turn. Yeah, I like that. Needs more cards. He's gonna save the Consecration for something better. Hmm. At least we see the first Murloc. Old Murkai. Oh, the mysterious challenger will appear next turn. <laughs> so what Chonger needs to get... Like... What he needs to get is basically an equality. Pyromancer doesn't necessarily help so much because uh, all of those minions will most likely survive the onslaught, so you need the equality just to decrease the HP of the minions and then kill them. So that's very important. Yeah, the mysterious challenger is going to do some work here. Oh, the challenger is actually being not, mm. is not being played, which is um, a good approach from Cyan. Because he doesn't overextend into the equality consecration or equality um, uh, pyromancer. So this makes uh, still a very uh, demanding board from uh, for Chonger. He needs to som do something about it. But it's not that easy to do something about it. Because a single consecration only kills the 5-2 minion and loot quarter which replaces a card. So it's still fine. Uh, you don't have an easy way to go through mm. the Belcher. And with six mana, you don't necessarily have like you know a lot of means to actually do something. So, true silver champion and doomsayer is probably the best option. Hmm, okay. Yeah, I was uh, I saw a couple of options there. It was consecration or true silver, one or the other. 
Repent doesn't even with a, a bluegill could have even been dropped earlier, but he chose the doom the doomsayer, which is also good. Stops him from building a building MC, mysterious challenger. Doesn't make any sense to play deep night juggler. I don't think so. Like there's no no it, no. It does no chance you can kill the doomsayer. I don't know why I was thinking it's uh, never mind. <laughs> Ooh, we got a, mm, no, a one that's, mana solid that vigil. That is solid. Solemn vigil for one mana, as you said. It can be for zero mana if you actually kill the minion first. So, definitely agree with that. But oh. I think maybe actually Blugel was better. Yeah. I guess he just wasn't expecting repentance, you know? He thought his blue, uh, his Murkai would live. Well, he was um, counting on a noble sacrifice, which is correct. Uh, because there's... There are two noble sacrifices in the deck, but one was already used on turn one. Who am I? None of your business. And four secrets are being drawn up, right? Yes. That was the Pyromancer, but still no equality inside. So I think you attack first. With the true silver. Or actually, uh, no, you could actually hit with your Mur Murloc first. There's a chance that the Murloc uh, Wall Eater would die. Mmm. You're sure that there's not one noble sacrifice. So if you play the Truth of a Champion, you only have mana for the Peacekeeper. And you want to use the Peacekeeper after the Avenge mm -hmm. lands. Mm -hmm. So it's either Blugel Warrior, Aldo Peacekeeper. I, I actually think, yeah, Blugel Warrior first, then you attack with the Warrior Leader. Because that puts another target that can survive the initial uh, knife. So that's very well, made by, uh, very well played by Chonger. Good. And now, if the Avenge lands on the 6-6, six six, and it lands on the 6-6, six that's, six, perfect. that's a perfect scenario. For Chonger. Oh, I did kill the War Leader though. That's kind of unfortunate. It's okay, he still gets to kill the Juggler. Yep. So a lot of uh, resources from Cyan was used now for that turn, but it was used with a little, uh, little effort. Small amount of effort, actually. Because um, basically it was one card. The problem is his deck is getting thinner it's and thinner. It's gonna silence his M mysterious challenger. Yep, it's a six-six. Back. And I guess one secret is being brought, right? Uh, Ooh, yep, one and secret. And there's no clear here. If he lays on hands, that's not enough. That's exactly lethal with lay on hands. So he needs to play Healbot and True Silver Champion, kill the 2-1 and the 3-2, and then attack to the face. Wait, but there's an Avenge! And the Avenge is basically making it impossible for Chonga to live this turn. He could... What secret is it? It's Avenge? It's Avenge. Okay, yeah, it's... It's, it's not... It wasn't good for Chonga then. So no chance for Chonga. It's tied up 1-1 uh, between Cyan and Chonger. And now the Murloc Paladin will have to win a match. I, well, maybe he will switch. But if he sticks to the Murloc Paladin, he'll have to play against... Druid was banned. So Warlock or Warrior, warrior. right? Is that a Patron Warrior? I think so. Seems like he was like an all aggro lineup. It's a Contra Warrior. Oh. Okay, so it's not that bad for Chonger unless um, unless the Justicar will show up uh, really early on, like turn 5 with a coin or turn 6 naturally. Then the Warrior can just ramp up so much damage, uh, sorry, so much armor, and it's impossible to just break it with yeah. double... Um, with double um, and if it can happen. I've seen uh, Warriors win, uh, win this matchup. It's possible. You, you just, just you did just the car. You save your you save your um, sludge belchers and you save your brawls. That's a good point. Tournament medic. Oh wow. Okay. I'm curious now. I mean, there's, there's a doomsayer, which I'm not surprised to see because some people are actually running doomsayers now with the version of of death lords. Um, Who just was as a fatigue warrior, but at the same time. The tournament medic might not be that useful against this type of mm. paladin. Mm. 
because you will have probably no time to kill it. Wasn't I mean, sorry, um, to to just get the value from the armor. Up. Wasn't it Fibonacci who uh, brought the tournament medic out for the control warrior? I'm not sure. Well, I can say that he he was uh, the one that used it first because you know there's so many players playing the game, like 40 millions overall. Uh, that I'm sure that someone bought it up um, faster than him. It happens all the time in card games, by the way. Someone comes mm -hmm. up, comes up with the deck, and he's known as the creator of the deck just because he wrote an article or something like that. Yeah. But and it he reached like rank like, no. one, imagine. Yeah, but the deck was like already known in the in the game itself. It's really nice to see that Chunger knows how to play this matchup. He values the minions in the beginning of the game because he knows he needs to. Just deal the damage as soon as possible. The problem is those zombie chows are not exactly helping in this uh, in this development, you know, of this damage. So, Tournament medic is a huge minion actually. One eight. Uh, does he want to use his equality though? No, there's no chance he will use an equality. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, I was thinking like there's no chance that he will use equality because he has a acolyte of pain, and the acolyte of pain is a perfect target for the attacks with the tournament medic. That's true. And the tournament medic doesn't have that much of an impact right now. Oh, that is an early Justicar. Yeah, turn six. So that's most likely GG. Yeah, that's that's gonna be tough. And unless now Tronger will stick a minion that will deal co consecutive damage. Okay. That's not something he him. wants to pick up. Just so there right was a war now. leader, and that's basically it, right? Yeah. He doesn't want anything right now. Two damage to the face, Peacekeeper, that's actually awesome. <laughs> I just want to say that the Peacekeeper on a Baron Geddon would be insane good because the Baron Geddon uh, like, doesn't have an easy way to deal uh, with itself because mm -hmm. it can be sacrificed so easy uh, because of the 5 HP and it deals the, mm -hmm. the 2 damage each turn to yourself. So overall, that would be actually really good for, for Chonger. I was sure that actually Cyan will sacrifice the Baron Geddon here. Because that's unnecessary 7 damage that you get to your own uh, own face. And Whoops. it lives. 2 bombs and it lives. 1 HP. Hmm. What uh, do you do? What do you do? Do you want to play double Peacekeepers and Hero Power? And just pass the turn. So one one minion remain. Uh, one one minion remains that will deal two damage at the end of the turn. You and if it can happen, unfortunately, doesn't have any burst damage. Hmm. He's even thinking about consecration, but yeah, that needs to happen. He needs to draw minions as soon as possible. Yeah. The problem, uh, I mean, Murlocs. The problem is there's a Belcher waiting. Which will be a huge obstacle. And a death lord. Cold light oracle. It can also mess up the uh, chances of getting a double Murkai, an example. From the anything can happen. Because <laughs> it's a Murloc <laughs> okay. as well. So it will die. It will be counted to anything can happen. Yeah, so he's not going to play that. He doesn't want to give him cards either. True silver champion. Not oh, that helpful. Aldor, true silver? No, it has to be land hands. No way on hands? Wow, I'm really surprised because this is the moment where you can actually draw for lay in hands. Yeah, yes. there's no minion. The minion that, that is just a five five is you know, uh, it's too bad that there, there that there is the five five minion, but at the same time it's not threatening that much. And if you just play the other peacekeeper and the one one minion and the hero power, you kind of declare that uh, yes, I want to trade, and the health is really important for me. So. Cyan is like, okay, this is getting really slow. It's good for me. I can tank up. I don't care. My opponent didn't draw for the Murlocs. He's still low on Murlocs. So, yeah. I'll just play my own game. Yeah, he looks pretty comfortable. It doesn't look good for Chonger. It doesn't. That land hands should have been played last time. Additional 5 armor being played. Now chipped off with 3 points, but 4 points back with this single hero power tank up. And that Gorhal is doing work. Uh, second equality, a second Solemn Vigil, 
and a pyromancer, so that's not bad. I don't see a point actually in clearing this 5-5. Five five. You want your your opponent to just overextend, so double solemn vigil most likely take place next turn, unless your opponent will overextend heavily and then you play pyromancer equality and solemn vigil mm. alongside that. I don't see uh, C and half overextending though. Well, one five five minions not exactly doing a lot of work, especially when you consider the Paladin having uh, like you know a lot of heals in general. Quite interesting. So what does the warrior do? Just tank up and that's it. I don't think you want to play the Belcher right now. There's no need to. Do you think he's gonna play the Death Lord? No, he's gonna play the Belcher. Probably only the Belcher. Could the 1 1 with the Gorhal being smaller and smaller? Two Truth of the Champions already used. Second Another anything. Mm. That's just not good. not good, yes. There's the second War Eater. But still, no other Murlocs. So, what was the. The win rate for the Murloc Pally in this tournament. Well, today it was okay. It, it won already two times, but in general, yesterday it was 06. So not exactly the best, you know, idea yeah. to bring it. Uh, but we'll see how it goes in this match because that's very important match for Chonger. If he doesn't win it, then he's out of the tournament. So two war leaders are in the anything can happen right now. Doomsayer. Hmm. Well, look like looks like Doomsayer will not have that much to say. Just then, wow, equality now. Well, he commits the solemn vigil then, and he will play the Doomsayer or the Murkai. The Murkai is way better. The Murkai will allow him to clear uh, the taunt from the way and put it into the anything can happen. So there are two. War leaders, and the Murkai, of course, will be there when it dies. So I'm that's not bad. I'm surprised he, uh, CN half used his Belcher already, actually. Yeah, I'm quite surprised that by that too. Like, there was no need to put the Belcher on the board right now. It's supposed to be there for when anything can happen is about to come down to block some damage from his face. 24. Uh, sorry, 34. HP for Cyan, a Google warrior, which is awesome. Yeah, perfect for the Doomsayer. One card left for Chonger in the deck, and that's the first Bluegill. A second Bluegill might be played next turn. So now let's see how we can um, how we can plan this. Ooh, be milled. One fatigue damage. Second cold light will be played? I think so. Yep. So that's additional 5 damage to the face for the Paladin. Yeah. And now next one will be 4 damage, so he's actually on 20. And next one he will be on 15. So only 15 damage. Um, Oopsie. <laughs> Only 15 damage needs to be done by Cyan if if he will get a if he will get a Gromar, that's it. I mean he now he can't even let those Coldlet Oracles live. That was a great play by Cyan. Yeah, that really was. P putting those two Coldlet Oracles like behind the Death Lord allowed him to threaten threaten lethal next turn just with those two Coldlet. Really br brilliant play. And now Chonger's in a situation where like, okay, I guess I lose. Because now I have to have lose to 6 them. damage, and I need to kill the Coldlet Oracle. So if he wants to win this game, that Coldlet Oracle needs to go face. But then that means he's dead. So it's like a really bad situation for him. Long story short. Mm -hmm. So that ten is damage. 10 damage, so he's lacking 5. You could he could draw for and find more cards, but... 
revenge for one damage. Was that needed? Yeah, that was a mistake. That was unnecessary. Still, not much that uh, can be done by Chonger. Now he has to play the Blugel Warrior. He gets 5 damage. Wait, you need to play the Blugel Warrior. If you want to deal damage next turn and to have bigger chances of getting the Blugel Warrior instead of Colloid Oracles, you need to play the Blugel Warrior this turn. That's right. Mm. It's, it's, it's really hard for Chonger to to even come back because Ooh. CN has a brawl <laughs> and a golden monkey now. Well, the golden monkey is actually uh, not beneficial at all in this situation because the brawl and the shield box are more valuable uh, than the golden monkey and random legendaries. Yeah. Another Doomsayer. Okay, interesting. But that's basically end of the game. Six damage. Next turn seven. Huh. Well, Chonger needs to play anything can happen this turn and hope that his opponent didn't draw the uh, the brawl. That's his only chance. What's the fatigue damage at? Uh, six. So next turn, seven. Go. Anything can happen. This yeah, is the only way of winning this game. If you just play the Murloc, you lost already because you will be dead by the fatigue damage next turn. Not this turn, but next turn. So after you just play one time, anything can happen. You won't have enough damage to kill the warrior, so the warrior doesn't care anymore. It just ends the turn and Paladin kills himself. Was there like any moment in the game where Chonger did have the lead? It didn't feel mm, like it. No, it didn't feel like it. Yeah, he didn't draw the Murlocs before he draw the anything can happen. That was a big issue. So yeah, seven damage, and what do you do? Even if you he if you heal for two you're at, at six, and next turn you're getting eight. So now anything can happen. First of all, you don't have space to even get the additional murloc. So wow, looks like Chonger is tilting. Like wow, he's so intense, <laughs> biting his lip. There's no way you can even make a space for the murloc. How much damage would even come out if he used it right now? Well, not enough. It's it's just one charge. So he didn't get his Merc Eye. Yeah. Just because that one just one. because of the um hero power lesson. I mean, I have to say Cyan Help played this really well. Yeah. Like really well. The Doomsayers were played correctly in when it comes to timing. An example the last one was brilliant because it he knew that this is the last and although he was winning already, but when you consider just the style of play and the quality of plays this turn uh, the Doomsayer last turn was brilliantly played because it played around the hero power from his paladin from his paladin opponent, so he wasn't able to use the anything can happen to the maximum because he didn't have a way to sacrifice his own minion. And then the double cold lights behind yeah. the death lords that was another that very was important thing. That's amazing. Like the cold lights worked for C and half. So let's see. The last, maybe the last game between those two players, the zoo against a country warrior. Yep, it's so not an easy matchup for either of the sides because if the warrior misses the weapons, then it's easy to lose board control, and without the brawl, you don't have an easy, easy coming back from that situation. At the same time, zoo might be in a pickle because you know one <laughs> brawl or just multiple weapons and you're really behind unless you played a game with death rattle minions and you just were always setting it up against a brawl yeah so it's and like a game of chicken <laughs> he does have the creepers so that's one annoying a minion out already hmm. even just drop the a oh no wait well, it egg can. is okay because you have Pio next turn, and ye but the at the same time, the egg is important against brawl. So that's 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 what I was saying. Like, there's no easy to decision. Uh, there's no easy decision. Should I play the egg as an sec uh, as a security, as an insurance against um, against the brawl, or should I just play it aggressively and just stack up damage? Usually, I'm the fan of being the aggressor. So. I would like like to see him play the the egg, but I can see why he didn't do that. 
think he's gonna go for the p egg plus PO here on the 1-1. One one. That will allow him to put a minion from the deck and if that minion is an example a second doom guard that would be insane <laughs> <laughs> but the chances of that happening are quite small so let's see could even be a dr boom that's true <gasps> oh wait wait why what that, why that one that was gonna live yeah why would you do that well that was sloppy i was actually thinking he was gonna put it on the one one that was really weird. I mean, there was a death fight with one durability, but there was no reason to actually do it because if with two ink gang bosses now, you would have had still an ink gang boss on 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 the on the board. Mm -hmm. So that was really weird. Especially when you consider the fact that the one one will die from the durability from <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, f from the death fight. Tap into... Coin implosion. Uh, Still not good, though. Kind of like last uh, Four? Everyone is, everyone is cheering right now. I know. It's Three. Three. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Revenge. Um, no, not needed. No. The egg. He doesn't want to break the egg. Shield Maiden is not bad. Mm, does he want to play the Shield Maiden? Harrison Jones is almost as good as... Uh, okay, I'm surprised by that. So he wants... He is utilizing the slam. That is really weird. Using a lot of his resources? Yeah, like... It is okay, but it just seems weird when you still have... When you still have two minions in your... Um, in your hand. And you probably want to use them as soon as possible against Zoo because you know you ha you don't have a brawl. Kind of weird, but okay, it's fine. <laughs> Can hear everyone outside. Whoops. They were cheering. Shield block into a weapon would be perfect. Nope, Elise showed up. Still not bad. So the acolyte of pain is being guarded by the blob let's <laughs> name it like that <laughs> so there are chances that it will draw multiple cards yep so Chang'er does want the knives to aim for the acolyte what to be honest if if the Chang'er won't have a weapon draw in the upcoming turns or some kind of removal it doesn't look pretty for him because now the Bran and Defender of Agus is just so powerful Nope. Denied. And the second knife. And the acolyte. <laughs> well, that's kind of unfortunate. Oh, Ooh. the bash. The bash is important, but I think you first want to see your card draw. Is there a way? There might be a taskmaster. So you can taskmaster the... Um, the knife dragon then became hunted dead. Oh, oh, that's not it. oh my god. So now imagine that the acolyte of pain wouldn't have been pinged. There was no chance of getting the execute. Yeah, that's so true. So that was important. Now everything just flips on its on its head and stronger is ahead. Wow, I used head This is a, t this is a close match. Not anymore. I mean, like, Chonger is gonna tie it up, most likely. No. Oh yeah, you mean like that? Yes. Yeah. That is correct. Gets rid of his owl and ooze. So one execute was used. Mm, we did see one death wide. No, the shields made it. Well, they help. They definitely help. And Cyan will not trade with those minions at all. Unless he would like to use the buff on the two full minions. Oh, he's using the art. Ah, nice move. Ah, uh, I like that. Yeah. Nice move. Gotta so the thing that was saying about Taskmaster, but from the other side. <laughs> and he put a bigger minion than the Abyss of Certain, so. Mm, it's okay. cool. Yeah, he's gonna get rid of the Doom Guard. And probably. Is it Shield Maiden or Belcher here? Is the Belcher better? I'm not sure if I like that. Shield Maiden I like. Um, 
the okay. fact that it only has free attack doesn't help you when your opponent have uh, has any buffs to the attack. So an example, a Bruce of Sergeant or Die Wolf Alpha helps immensely here. It does. And as we can see, Sun has only that in his hand, so Yeah, and he can keep all his minions. And still push for damage. So now again the game changes. is like changed the, the board stage changes. It was looking good for Chonger. It doesn't look good anymore. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> So he's back and forth. Well, that is not helping. Harrison Jones is never gonna, you know, this like actually gonna kill, like, this take out any weapons. So yeah, but this is why I'd, I'd like to see that Harrison Jones being played, like, you know, on the turn when he was uh, playing Revenge instead, because uh -huh. then you utilize the minion that is otherwise useless. Should Maiden or Harrison Jones? Harrison, Harrison Jones. Fills out the curve and builds armor as well. Does less armor than Shields Maiden. And it doesn't really matter if he has 5 HP or 4 with the bo current board state. Of course, if there's an abusive surgeon, then it's, it's different. Let's see. Double flame limbs. Wow! That's not helpful at all. I mean, you still have to play those if yeah. you want to win. Because your opponent is at healthy 33. Well, not anymore, but at the same time, you kind of don't want to overextend because you didn't see the brawl, yep. but the brawl is not in the hand. That would be my guess if I would be on Cyan, um, Cyan, Cyan's uh, side, so I would definitely play at, at least one of the flame maps. But then you're in range of Gromash. Speaking Ooh. of brawl, so it is a good thing that he didn't play the flame maps mm -hmm. yet. The problem is he needs to play the flame maps next turn then. If the brawl will be happening right now, you need to play the minions. And those minions, unfortunately, are kind of dragging you down. What lives? Die no. Not bad. You can still be killed with the shield, uh, shield slam, but I don't think you want yeah, to play the shield slam. Because there's another Doom Guard, and you can kill the another Doom Guard with Shield Maiden, Armor Up, Shield Slam. So that's more than fine. And turn, and now let's see what will Cyan draw. Nav Juggler. Well, that's nice. Now you have to overextend. You have to play everything. Ooh, Argus. Both Flame Imps are going down. Oh wait, he actually get the defend got the Defender of Argus, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, okay, then never mind me. Now we are safe from... Um, it's the from last... The drum. It's the last push, really, from Cyan half. And there's the Grom. But there was no activator, like the every single bit of armor was taken down. So now uh, Chonger needs to use the Shield Slam. And needs to kill, Which I think, the Wolf, actually. Because yeah. the Wolf is 5 damage, and your opponent is only on 2 cards, and probably only one of those is a minion. Uh oh What's that? Flame Imp? No, thank you. Security Keeper? Eh? Undertaker? No. Oh. no the, that's the best one from the three. <laughs> from the trio here. <laughs> which one are you gonna. Which one do you think? Flame <gasps> Imp? Oh, well, that's ballsy. Oh. He's now in range of a single weapon swing from Death He Spire. has to kill this Shield Maiden. Alright. Yes. Yeah. As he he's going half. He needs to leave his taunts up. So, 17 life from Chonger. Mm. 4, 7, 10, 13. 16, 18 damage. 18 damage is on board, so he needs to armor up and kill one of the minions. That decreases the amount of damage by 5, adds plus 2 armor. So now it's 4, 6, 8, 11, 13, 17. 2 off. And both abuse of central. Oh! oh! There's the Doom Guard. We got it. Cian Half is going to take it. Well, oh, that was wow. an interesting match. I'm really sur uh, surprised. Not that is, that's not the correct word. I'm impressed by Cyan uh, play with with the Fatigue Warrior. So definitely interesting player to to just observe here in the tournament. And we'll see how he will play in the next match because he will be facing Waning Moon if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm looking right? forward to that match. It was a good good game for both players and Cian 
Congratulations for taking that win. Correct. So, yep. Sign will have a short break before he will play into the final of the loser's bracket. Yes. And after that, two we'll have games the grand left. Final. Yeah, two games left for the Shanghai... Oh, it's not what I'm talking. Singapore <laughs> Major. Sorry for that. And uh, <laughs> we'll take a short break before the next match and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. See you guys soon.